Welcome to the Plumes of Oz where we look at the Australian birds in the wild. This bird bathing is an Australian native black-tailed hen. Those beautiful orange legs and feet. They are large feet. And the genus name is Tribonyx, meaning crushing claw. And those large feet certainly give the impression that they can do this. And the bill, it is green with a shield over the forehead. Most waterfowl have orange or red bills. So this green is quite distinctive of the black-tailed native hen. Did you see that scat dropped on the ground? It was a herbivorous scat, brown, not the white guano type scat of birds that eat a lot of shrimp out of the water or insects. These birds are largely herbivorous, grazing in wetlands and along riparian waterways. In the wild, it's not unusual to find groups of up to six. Finding large flocks is unusual, and the implication with a large flock is that there has been an eruptive phase in the breeding. That is, that the rain has come and the grass has grown and the birds have bred in large numbers. The red legs of the black-tailed native hen are quite characteristic. One other waiter with red legs that may cause confusion is the spotless crake as shown on the insert. But this doesn't have the vertical tail of the black-tailed native hen. And the bill is dark and lacks the green of the native hen. This group of black-tailed native hens are grazing on the grass. They are mostly herbivorous. Now, the next view we see is them grazing over the water. But notice that their bills are going below the surface of the water. They are not chasing shrimp, but instead are searching for water weed. The black-tailed native hen belongs to the family Relidae, and most members of this group are wetland birds. Common names you will hear are coot, swamp hen, moor hen, crake, rail, and the common feature is that they all like wetlands and are virtually terrestrial birds. And the other standout feature is that in the breeding mode they are extremely territorial. Purple swamp hens chasing one another away. This is a territorial breeding response. There is enormous anatomical diversity within the Rallidae. And with the rails and the crakes, there are similarities between the European, North American and the Australian birds. But the black-tailed native hen and the Tasmanian native hen are quite distinctive with no other counterparts, forming the genus Tribonyx. Here, a spotted crake searching for worms along the water's edge. These birds have got very delicate feet in contrast to the Tribonyx. A white-browed crake, a small, delicate bird with long toes. This bird is very suited to walking over lily pads. A buff banded rail, again, searching along the water's edge for worms. The native hen and the coot both have strong shields over the forehead, as you can see in this Eurasian coot. And another bird that looks a little bit like our native hen with red legs, but this one has a red bill, and the shield over the forehead is the same as the bill, red. This is the dusky moor hen. Another native hen, another Tribonyx. This one lives in Tasmania. Our black-tailed native hen is only found in continental Australia. So this is the flightless native hen of Tasmania. It differs in bill colour and leg colour. Back to the mainland, and you'll look at this bird and you think, oh, this is an escaped Tasmanian, come to the mainland. But no, this is a young black-tailed native hen. With the immaturity, it doesn't have the green on the bill. And though there is a little red on the legs, it is not that bright, warm orange red. Back to the adults. And here you can see two native hens with one immature dusky moorhen giving them a run for its money. Now what I want to show you in these following clips is the way these birds coming into springtime become very territorial and spend a lot of time chasing one another away either from a potential partner or from their breeding territory. As a sign of aggression in these territorial chases the bird puts its head down and then races. And here, two birds are having a standoff. Nothing eventuated, fortunately. Not all the chasing is aggressive territorial claims. Sometimes the male will run after the female to see exactly what is going on and where she is. 
and listen to the calls as this chasing goes on and you'll notice the changes in the pitch. The term Rallidae was introduced in 1678 in a pre-Linnaean attempt at taxonomic nomenclature by an ornithologist called Francis Willoughby. The word rail, he believed, was the English diction for royal and the spelling was just different. And when you think this is only 50 years after Shakespeare died, and Shakespeare often changed the way he spelt words, in particular his own signature, and there are multiple variations in his signature with spelling differences. So the Rallidae probably comes from royal. Dusky moor hens are in the same family as the black-tailed native hen, the Rallidae. And here is an extreme example of the moor hens having a territorial dispute that is very close to causing death of another bird. And the same with these native black hens. They chase one another constantly, keeping the bird away from its mate or a potential nesting site. Notice the way when the head goes down, the bird chases. This downward movement of the head, and to a lesser degree also the downward movement of the tail, is an aggressive sign. Two birds running with one another with their heads and tails both up is a different story. The implication here is that these two birds are a mating pair. Now I can't tell male from female as these birds are isomorphic. That is, the male and the female look identical. There are no signs of aggression in this sort of chase and at the end of the chase the interesting thing is both birds will momentarily stand still with one another. Well standing still isn't an absolute after a chase sometimes they proceed to copulation. The smaller native hen on the right is a juvenile, a chick from the previous hatching. So when the season is good, these birds can have multiple broods. Another interesting thing is the change in pitch. Often one bird will start with the caw 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 caw, then the frequency will drop. Then the second bird will come in at the original frequency. And this seems to happen prior to mating. Following copulation, the birds begin to collect nesting material. For most part, nest building takes place in close proximity to the wetland, and this takes the form of a scrape, like many waders use to lay their eggs. I would like to show you two other situations that these black-tailed native hens use for nesting. This black-tailed hen is vigorously collecting grass. There is quite an abundant amount in the bill. And just watch, she will take it out over to the wetland and place it within a tuft of grass. And as noted before, everything that the black-tailed native hen does, it does in a hurry. Here is the tuft of grass where the bird has just deposited the nesting materials. A young, immature, black-tailed native hen wandered close to this nest, a little bit too close for the comfort of the adult that was preparing this as a nesting site. And so another speedy chase-off. So that was nest building out in the wetland itself, building the nest within a tussock of grass. Here is the second nesting site that's a little unusual at the end of this hollow log. The nest is situated at the end of this hollow log. The black-tailed native hen walks over the log, goes into the water, comes around to the end of the log where the nest is, and then climbs in for incubation. This nest is well protected from raptors. And as the bird sits, you can see the beautiful red and green colours within the dark of the hollow log. Both adults are involved in nest building, watching over and incubating the eggs. 
Periodically they will chain shift, one of the birds going out to feed while the other takes care at the nest. Blacktail native hens, as well as being good runners, are good swimmers. With their large toes, they can move through the water rapidly. One of the birds that has been nest minding is now swimming to shore, where on arrival it gives a loud call, signalling it is time for change of shift. And so the bird that was minding the nest now goes to feed. Here he is, that beautiful green bill and the red legs and the vertical tail comes onto the shore and then swims out to the nest. When this pink haired duck came out for a little bit of a sunbake on top of the nest, I thought there would have been a bit of a ruckus. There was a little bit of anxiety in the birds sitting at the nest, but otherwise they tolerated one another well. Young native hens are attritional, totally dependent on the adults. But when the new clutch is laid, the last thing the parents want is the young ones around. And you can hear, see here an adult trying to chase away a young hen. Earlier on, we saw a scat, or some dung, from the black-tailed native hen, and this had a typical grass pattern to it. So these birds are largely herbivorous. But what else do they eat? Another illustration showing the herbivorous nature of the diet, here eating fresh green grass. And again, picking at the water grass. Now the nutrient value of lakeweed is much different than that of terrestrial grass, for it is covered with algae, bloodworms and other pond inhabitants. And just like ducks, so the Australian native black-tailed hen picks the weed from off the bottom of the lake. Now this is a little different. This black-tailed native hen is pecking from the tufts of grass, taking the seed heads. And this is quite a common occurrence for the black-tailed native hen, and I suspect seeds form an important part to their diet. Waterweed shoots hitting the surface are soft and tender and appear to be an appetizer to the black-tailed native hen. I have not been able to film many occasions where these birds eat insects, but they are omnivorous, but overall do prefer tender grass shoots. Just watch this native hen as it puts its bill under the surface of the water. You could interpret this as the bird looking for insects or shrimp under the surface of the water. But in reality, this bird is after water shoots coming up from the mud floor. Now throughout this video, I have shown you many clips taken in spring where the birds are into their breeding mode, separating the flock as either pairs or small family groups. But overall, the Australian native hen is very much a flock bird, and here at rest you can see them, quite happily and content, resting in the shade with their feet in the water on a hot day. These two birds were seen about 30 kilometres from any water source that I knew. So they do move about and they do go into dry areas, but for the greater part you will find them around water areas. And here is a flock of black-tailed native hens. I had been to this water point many times before and never seen a native hen 
But suddenly there was this huge influx of black-tailed native hens into this little lagoon area. This is called an eruption. In Adelaide in the 1840s, there was a huge influx of these birds into the metropolitan area. They were so numerous that there were thousands walking up and down most streets. There were so many that they were destroying gardens and orchards. They were then declared a pest. But just as suddenly as these birds appear, so the hordes can suddenly lift up, fly off and take away. On behalf of Plumes of Oz, thank you for watching this video. If you would like to subscribe, you will be notified of more video releases of Australian birds in the wild.